We just love to take mud baths. That's all we're doing over here, Doc. We're just taking some mud baths. This is really healthy for the skin. It opens up the pores. It's just a, it's just a good, healthy thing to do once in a while. Take yourself a mud bath. Isn't he pretty? Now that's way down at the other end of my lake down there. And I just got done spraying duckweed down there, but man, he is pretty. And I have these guys come in every day. Ducks come in, geese. Ooh, a little bit windy. Let's see how far away he is. He is way down the other end of that pond. So, as you guys know, I've been away from the farm property for about two months. Nothing's been done. And it's amazing how Mother Nature just takes over, takes back property. <laughs> so all this was just cleared out. You can see I've sprayed it with some glyph uh, glyphosate down in here. Actually, not glyphosate. I'm using a fish safe weed killer down in here. It's really expensive. And then in the pond, we have a duckweed problem. As you can see, the whole pond was solid green about two weeks ago. And when I first got back, I bought, um, there's a spray, there's an herbicide that's fish safe that you can spray on the duckweed and kill it. Now I've killed off probably about 30% of it, but it's like every morning, every time I come out here, I gotta spray it just to battle it and battle it. It's just, man, it's tough. So we're cleaning that up and uh, I'm just gonna sort of walk you through what we're doing with the property and give you a little bit of update. The other day I came up here, grabbed a whole bunch of produce out of the field. I'll show you that and uh, just walk you around. So hold on. Okay, so, uh, you know, we spent six weeks working on this property just clearing this whole place out. It was horrible. And we've got it really cleared out. I mean, we took out 100 trees, we took out 9,000 pounds of steel, we took out three vehicles, we took out a cattle trailer, we redid the barn, we had to drill a well, we put in a new septic system, we had to fi fix the burn, pond burn. So we have been just spending money and spending money and working and working down here. So now we're getting ready for the next phase. And what's the next phase? So the next phase is to redo this old house. This house was built back in the 80s um, and we had to either choose to tear it down or rebuild it. And let me explain what we're going to do here. Let me explain. So I'm getting ready to order a, a, um, a barn, small barn, like a 20, 16 by 20 barn shed. And I'm going to put that right back over here. I had gravel dumped this morning. We're going to run power over to it. Let's see this garage. This garage will now become the master bedroom and master bath and master closet. Got that? <clears throat> on the front here, um, we are coming out on the front. This is the back, which we are calling the front now. And from the edge of that house, all the way over to this roof line right here, 30 feet, we're gonna put a 30 by 16 sunroom right out here. And that sunroom will be all windows and overlook this pond, be great. There'll be a deck here, we'll put a deck, and that'll be the new front entrance. We'll put a walkway. We can park our cars over here. I may even build like a little craftsman um, park under place here. We'll, we'll clean all this up, we'll landscape that. And the whole inside, the entire inside and outside of the house is gonna be redone. It's a massive project. So um, we expect, we're hoping the finish date to be November 1st, is what we're thinking. And you're like, well, Doc, what are you gonna do? So Ryan's getting ready to go into law school and he and his fiance, we'll call it, um, have been living in a townhouse and housing prices are just through the roof. So the wife and I talked about it and I think what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna move out here and we're gonna rent them our old house. And that way I'll still be able to take care of that Bermuda lawn. I'll put in some kind of lawn here plus whatever else we got going on. So this will be a big project. So let me hop in um, now. So you understand there's on the front portion, there's 10 acres, which is was a pasture, overgrown pasture. We tore all that out. We turned it into fields. We ran irrigation up there. We planted it. Our plantings at this point are experimental just to see what will grow and what the deer are going to ravage. And then the rest of it is all for the deer and wildlife. So we planted clover, brassica, turnips, beets. I mean, everything that for the deer, that's what we're planting up there. And the deer are just piling in. I'm gonna put up a picture for you guys. <laughs> there are 
five, we, we had very few deer here on this property traveling through here. And since we redid this, look at this picture. There are five bucks all eating together. This is just a week or two ago. All five bucks eating in the field together with that one baby deer in here. And I have, I have counted over 65 bucks up on that field out there. So the way that this works is there's 10 acres on the front side. And then we call this middle 10 acres is the house and the pond. And then there's an additional 20 acres. There's an additional 20 acres behind that. That's just beautiful wildlife and deer woods back over there. I have a long driveway, which we installed and put gravel. That's about 1200 foot driveway in here. And then we ran gravel and we put another driveway. We installed another driveway, another 1200 foot driveway out the back side of the property. It only had one way in and one way out and I, I wanted two. So let me run up to the field real quick and just show you what the status of the field is. I'm just gonna give you a brief run around today before, cause I'm gonna show you guys this remodel project. Get my phone. I'm gonna show you guys and I'm gonna document the remodel project of this house. No windshield's dirty, but Just shut that off and we'll leave that here. So you see back there how you have a bunch of trees and grass back way back over there. Well, that's what this was. <clears throat> we had to work our butts off to bring this back into some kind of field. Uh, and of course we believe in no-till and that's what we're doing here, but we had to till this up and cut it down one time. So we did some experimental plantings in here, but most of the planting in here is like, you'll see it's turnips and brassica and clovers. Now this field, there's, there's a deer stand back over here. This field, I have planted different stuff, but let me tell you what, this Carolina horse nettle, if you've never dealt with it right here, this is, um, this is Carolina horse nettle. Ouch, and it's got prickers all in it. That stuff, is just nasty and it's actually toxic to um to cows and deer and i've got a whole bunch of it in here so what i plan to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to spray this whole upper field i'm going to kill it off and then i'm going to replant it with clover and brassica probably in here i just can't get millet i'm going to try millet too but i've planted millet and can't get it now this is the larger field that we have up here. This is the large field that we planted. And then over here is a small field. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I'm disappointed about, I'm disappointed that none of my potatoes came up. We planted regular yellow Yukons. We planted sweet potatoes and it's like nada, nothing. I mean, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna look, but so this row is supposed to be sweet potatoes and there's just, there's just nothing, didn't take. What is 
this? That's not a potato. So I'm really disappointed in that. However, the deer are in here and what the deer are eating is they're eating the clover and they're eating all of this, these turnips and brassica right here. See this? Look at the radish. That's a radish. And that's what they're in here eating, chomping away. What's interesting is <laughs> we planted tomatoes and the deer came in and ate all the tomatoes. You can see them. They're all nipped off all around here. The deer nipped off all the tomato plants. So the deer came in here and ate tomato plants, which is unusual. I didn't think they'd eat tomato plants. But here, everything, let me tell you what did do well. Yellow squash did well and zucchinis and all the squashes. So I'll show you some of the stuff I picked, but like here, all this yellow squash, look at it. So all these yellow squash plants did really well. This is, is that a watermelon? That might be watermelon. And then the zucchini back over here did well. The zucchini plants actually did fairly well. So I pulled a bunch of zucchinis out of here and there's another one, there's more zucchinis coming up. Like right here in the middle. See it? I think I pulled seven zucchinis out of here the other day. All right, so again, this is that horse nettle field I'm gonna kill off. Look at this, look at this Bermuda. This is all Bermuda growing here, all on this gravel. It's amazing. All right, so the barn's down over there. And then this is the small field. Now, if I wanted to, what would make sense if I wanted to plant an eating crop would be to fence in, fence in this small field and plant human food and then leave this big field open for deer because that's where the deer are coming out of here and just packing into this field. But this field actually did pretty well as far as squash. That's about it. So my pumpkins, you'll see, I pulled two pump, three pumpkins out yesterday. And you can see I've actually got pumpkins growing in here. There's several pumpkins all the way down here. And then over there, oh, look at that. that little baby pumpkin. And then over here, more yellow squash. God, I can't eat but so much yellow squash. So all the yellow squash is down in here. All the beans and peas got destroyed by the deer. So we'd have to actually close this off. But um, like I said, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here late, maybe in about a month or so. I'm gonna come in here and start spraying, kill off some of this. And then I'll come in with my, with sort of a bush hog cutter. I'll cut this down and then I'll replant um, clover and brassica and the food. So we'll do that late summer and that will carry us into the fall. So look at this horse nettle. This horse nettle has little, little berries on it. Well, let me just give you an example here. I mean, what do I have? Probably, oh, that one looks like it's bad. Let's give that one to the deer. I mean, I probably have 50 yellow squash here of all different sizes. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six beautiful zucchinis. I've got two pumpkins. I've got one in the truck down there. Um, I'm starting to see these turnips should be growing bigger and they're not. So I'm gonna have to investigate why. There's, I, mean, I may be low on some phosphorus or something. And then this was my surprise. This is a radish. That's actually, it's a radish seed for the deer, but they are delicious. And I tasted one and I went back. Um, and I specifically went back for half an hour in the field looking for more of them because they were so delicious. I was like, I gotta find more of these. I mean, I'm not a huge radish fan, but man, those are, oh, they're so good. It's like candy. Whew. Okay, so I'm back at the house. And uh, if you didn't watch the last video, we're doing a summer scalp out here. We didn't do anything to this yard for two months. 
We took it down to anywhere from between half an inch to a quarter of an inch. We scalped it down. We're getting ready to feed it, aerate it, do some things to this. We're going to bring this back to a nice golf course lawn. You're going to want to see that. But let me hop over in the corner real quick, and I'll talk to you just a little bit more about what we're doing at the house. We're at the point now where we're finalizing. Our general contractor that we're using uses an online tracking program. So every conversation that we have, everything that we pick, everything we've down through whether it's a toilet paper dispenser or the type of hardwoods or the tile, everything is actually logged into that system, which is really unique. It's a very comforting feeling to know that what you're talking about is actually documented and we never talk on the phone and we never talk via email through all the people in that company. All the company conversations go into that system so that they're all logged. That's very unusual. So like today, this morning, we went over and we finalized. We had all the tile to pick out for the bathrooms. We had the hardwood floors to do. We had the countertops to do. One thing I am doing in this place, we're going with sort of a modern farmhouse where the inside is gonna be lots of white, lots of nickel gap, shiplap, lots of white, white cabinets, white counters. And then all the accessories are gonna be black. So the lighting will be black, the stools, the faucets so it's going to be kind of a cool look but downstairs the one thing i always wanted i've always wanted is i always wanted wide plank hardwood floors so i don't like the little skinny hardwood floors um, and i have lvp down at the beach house and it's nice but i wanted some real oak wide hardwood floors so i met today with the flooring people and i found a real nice eight inch wide oak floor and that's going to be real cool to see now upstairs, we're not gonna use that a whole lot, so we're gonna go LVP upstairs. But the whole transformation of the inside of this place is gonna be really cool because it was nasty when we actually took this, when we actually bought this property. So anyways, that's just a little update, guys. We've got um, lots of stuff to do in the lawn. We just finished scalping the lawn, summer scalp. We gotta aerate this, we gotta fertilize it, we're gonna bring it back to health. Uh, and I'll keep you, I'll bounce back and forth between the farm property and this property. So we got a lot of stuff coming. Hold on. Hit subscribe. Dot.